Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture we are going to learn about literature review matrix. And here I'm going to show you an example how a literature review matrix looks like. And I will also share with you these sample Excel files which you can download from the Research Hub website and you will find a link along with the video. So first of all, why are we going to use literature review matrix? Main thing is that when we are reading, you know, when you are doing a literature review, whether it's for a master thesis or a PhD thesis, we are going to read a lot of articles. And if you just keep reading, 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 after reading five of the articles, you will not remember what the first article has said, right? After reading the sixth article, it would be even difficult to remember what the fifth article has said. So the literature review matrix normally helps us to organize the articles that we read for our thesis. So this literature review matrix, it could be very useful for the literature review section of an empirical article, but it could be also very useful when you are conducting a literature review study, dedicated literature review study, a systematic review study or a bibliometric review study. So for the content analysis part of a literature review study, it could be also very useful. So I normally use a literature review matrix for all my empirical studies and also for all my dedicated literature review studies. Here I have like different columns and here I have an example. So here it's just the number of articles. So let's say if you're going to review 20 articles, then you will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So then you will have the article title, then you will have the year you just uh, take the journal name, you take the name of the authors, you take the keywords used in authors. So how do you really do this? How do you really do this? For example, let's say if I just show you randomly with this article that I have open here. So if I have the article open, then I'm going to say article title, I'm just going to copy it from here, right? I'm just going to copy and I'm going to paste it from the year published, it was year, we can see it was 2018. So I put 2018. The journal, I just copy the journal name. I put it here. The authors, I'm just going to copy their name and I'm going to put it here. There could be nicer ways of presenting it, but I'm just going to keep it like this now, right? Then here for keywords, we know we can find the keywords here. So we will just copy the keywords from here. So let's say here in this article, is it kind of a theme? Do we have a theme for this article? Yes, we can say it's a green supply chain. Okay, it's a green supply chain. Data source, it was a review study. So now you have to read a little bit more into the study. When you read a little bit more into the study, then you will know that it's a review study because I've done this study. I know it very well. So I'll just say it's a for review studies. The data source is often than Web Science or Scopus. And if I remember correctly, it was collected from the Web of Science database. OK, so we put Web Science. The sample here was to find the sample. I can have a look here. We see that in total, we used 1,523, 1,523 articles. And here, country in focus, it was no country in focus. So I can keep it empty or I can just put an A. Industry in focus, it was no industry in focus. We reviewed all industries. So for green supply chain management, the study could be done for, let's say, in automotive industry, for textile industry for pharmaceutical industry. So we could have done this review for different industries, which people have done in recent years, okay? But in our case, there was no focus industry. So I can put it NA or I could just have kept it empty. So for method, I'm going to say it's a bibliometric or we would rather say it's a hybrid literature review because we combine bibliometric and also the systematic approach or content analysis approach. So we would say hybrid review. So you see, this is how we will keep filling these files. And I know the article very well. So that's why I'm not reading it. But otherwise, you have to read the methodology to find out okay, what methodology was used, then you will put a entry here. Here, in this case, we don't have any independent dependent variables. So I'll just keep them empty or I'll just put NA not applicable. Okay. 
all of them yeah not applicable main findings then we can have a look into the main findings in the conclusions we can read about it and then we can put here so here in this study mainly we proposed a framework okay we proposed a framework for showing that how green supply chain management drivers affects the green supply chain management practices and how that leads to performance uh, improvement in performance uh, sustainability performance right so here you see it's the operational economic environmental and social performance so while i'm showing this another thing i would like to mention is that for this kind of literature review matrices here you see we have the main findings we have future research if you have any remark you can add it it's good to always have the url so that if you want to go back here you can go back anytime you want so when you fill it up for like 20 articles 50 articles 100 articles so then it becomes really easy to see what's happening in these articles okay you can just by selecting them you can uh, then kind of have a chart of the distribution of the sample you can have a chart of the distribution of the country in focus industry in focus and so on so it will help you a lot to summarize in that all your findings right but the point i was going to make is that for this kind of literature review matrix here it's a general literature review matrix but you can adapt it to many different ways for example in this study, we use something called SCOR framework, Supply Chain Operational Reference Framework, okay, SCOR framework. And under SCOR framework, there are mainly five things. One is plan, source, plan, make, deliver, return, okay? So as you can, maybe you can see here, source, plan, make, deliver, and return. These are the four main concepts under the SCR framework in green supply chain management. And under that, there could be many criteria or indicators. So we actually grouped all these articles into, as you can see here, these are our articles, okay? In our, these are, we, we, we analyzed mainly the most cited 39 articles, I think, in detail. And these are the articles and these are the things we found under plan these are the things we found under source okay so we went through each of the articles and we coded them in excel file like this using literature review matrix okay so we put these indicators in the appendix but we have put a nice figure here and then explained it in detail so the point i'm trying to make is that sometimes you can also you can use this general literature review matrix and you can delete some columns that you do not need you can add some columns that you need but regardless of what kind of research you are doing data source sample size country industry method then the main variables okay independent variables dependent variables hypothesis or proposition these are really important to have in the literature review matrix and sometimes you can do this kind of uh, let's say, for example, you can follow a 7P framework, okay, 7P framework for literature reviews or content analysis in the literature review. And then also you can have this Excel file where you will have these seven P's and under each piece you will have different articles. So the 7P framework, it looks like this. Let me show you very quickly, very briefly. See, it looks like this. Potential, path, process, pace, pattern, problem, and performance. So this is one way of summarizing articles also. And this is very relevant for international marketing, but this application could be done also for international business in general, okay, or international ent entrepreneurship. So you can also add up a framework like this, for example, a seven pre framework. And then you will have those seven things must in the in one of the either in the row or in the column somewhere depending on how you design your excel file here i'm going to show you another example of now how these excel files could be really useful for you so for example in this article if we go down here we have the journals uh, but if we go down here you see all the articles that use regression analysis we have it here 
survey method we have it here case method mixed method cluster so list of all the articles so just from these uh this this column here uh sorry uh just from this column here method column you can have a table like this right fantastic then you can also kind of present a distribution of the method so here uh, you can show uh, percentage right here you can have a table like this all the dependent variables so this variable was used as a dependent variable in this study it was independent variable in this study you can see that our way was used in dependent variable here independent variable here farm age was used as independent variable in these studies but control variables in these studies so you see just again just following these framework here you can this these variables here actually if you code your data following these variables you can have a table like this very easily in your article right again for purpose method and findings you can just use these columns right sometimes if you want to have a table for future research directions you can just have it from here so for example which we also did here like and then we present some future research directions so when we were coding different articles we were taking future research directions from there and mostly we are focusing on the future research which has not been already studied uh, and here you see we have the references right from which articles we get which future research direction so having a literature review matrix like this helps you a lot not for this uh, this not not only for this kind of not only for the bibliometric literature review or systematic or literature review in general but you know during the phd you are likely to read a lot of articles okay at some point by three or four years of the phd maybe you have read like 200 300 articles so if you have a file like this where you have extracted and you have put input you have you have you have summarized these 200 300 articles or 400 articles in excel file like this it may not be only one excel file so if you're doing four papers maybe for four papers you have four different excel files but you can go back to them anytime and you will see the whole field is there and by doing this input manually also reading the articles and putting them manually you also remember them better so it will help you in your whole career helps me a lot actually now now a lot of the times i don't have to read many of the old articles anymore because i remember quite a lot of them when i'm writing i can just cite them directly sometimes if i have to double check i open one of my old excel files and i can see what they found what was the main finding if they really use that data so i can quickly have a look and cite them already and it is a great great idea so if you have this if you are an academic scholar and if you want to be in the academic field of research in your career then if you have these 200 300 articles mapped like this for, for the upcoming years you can just add the new articles that you see published and code them here and then you are always you are always updated on your research field okay and it will help you to write many papers so it's like the base of your research the stronger the base is going to be the better research you will do in the future most likely so before i finish this lecture i would like to show you some more examples so for example in this article let's say if we have a look here you see it's a review a study here they're presenting these tables say so these tables they are coming from a excel file like that of course right and if we go down there are like more uh, tables and figures which can be also extracted from a uh, literature review matrix like that and you will see they present a lot of information in the appendix as well okay so like for example here top 20 countries you see a lot of citation based analysis you see much more detail of the uh, of the articles so when you do a literature review matrix you can make use of it in many ways and if you do it well it will benefit you throughout your career for sure okay 
Okay, so thank you very much. I hope you find it useful and I hope you'll be using literature review metrics when you're doing your next study. And if you have any queries, feel free to reach me anytime.